And we're back with some more oxygen not included. And today we're going to claim the water planet. Well, we've already sort of claimed the water planet, but what we're going to do is we're going to build a permanent settlement here for a colonist or two. Their job will be to, em to empty the desalinator. We could put in an automated system, but that's not really living with the plan. All right, here they come now. Perfect. I'd forgotten how long it takes to land on a planet to slow down. Well, that's going to add a little bit to our nuclear waste problem, but that's fine. We can clean most of that up before we leave, and then leave a bunch more behind when we go, because that's how we roll. And the first thing we're going to do here is we're actually going to put down another rocket silo. Oh, I should probably tell them to turn on that atmosphere checkpoint. Otherwise, uh, they might accidentally, I don't know, go outside with no suits on. I can imagine that's some pretty impressive water pressure out there. Uh, buddy? Maybe get back inside? Couple of things we're going to take care of real quick. One, we're going to put a rocket platform together so we can land the second builder module. Oh, I have also installed a mod that allows us to rename things. So now we can actually rename these rockets, and now they actually have real names that I can associate and go, ooh, that, that, that needs destruction or use or whatever it is. I'm going to rename a lot of them slowly as we go along. But uh, let's see, Melanton here is going to put that together. At the same time, we've installed a manual generator here. This, though, should not be necessary. The reason being, since we've installed a bunch of solar at the top of the map, what we can do is just run a wire across like that, plug into the main grid. We might need a ladder segment just to get that last one. And done. Now this whole thing should be able to be powered from off the main grid, and we won't have to have anyone running on the wheel, hopefully. With the second platform done, we can land our second builder team here, and that gives us six duplicates to make some real changes. Oh. This one's also going to need to get a power wire installed. That shouldn't be too hard. Now, right about there is good. We'll stick it in a ladder segment or two. Oh, and we're going to want to make sure at the same time that no one can get in or out of here that shouldn't be allowed in. So a couple of quick doors should be perfect. Now that we've got the basics down, doors in place to stop people trying to use each other's bathrooms or hang around in each other's capsules, but we can, and we're hooked up to power, we're going to get ourselves up to the top of the map here. We want to put in a base over here. And I don't want to go through this area, namely because it's, it's a little, little bit hazardous to duplicates health at the moment, namely because of all the rad bolts flying around at head height. Uh, they're, they're pretty resilient, those duplicates, but uh, getting shot repeatedly in the head, it seems, is, is very detrimental to their health. Once we're up there, we can cut off those two ladder segments and they'll trap them over this side and stop them wandering in here to get themselves hurt. Not that they have already much. Considering the travel distances involved, I'm thinking plastic ladders the whole way. We had a few radiation issues there we had to iron out before we got to this point. Some people may have uh, strayed a little bit too close to this box. It's a little bit radioactive. I think they were passing through this tile and got dosed because a couple of people started throwing up in the rockets. It was a whole mess, but it's all sorted. All the door permissions are correct this time, and we got rid of that other rocket. That was also confusing things. It's really awkward to keep duplicates in their correct rockets. It's not really... I don't think the game is designed to really have duplicates living out of capsules, but, you know, you, you manage what you can. With a plastic ladder going all the way from the top to the bottom, that should speed up transport a bit. Though I am not investing in a fire pole here. That fun as it would be to fire pole all the way from the top of the top to the bottom of the map, we don't have access to that much ore. Or well, we do, but I'm not going to waste it that way. Now up at the top here, what I'm going to do is stick a whole bunch of plastic tiles all the way up to the top. We need this to stop the rads. The rads are about 218, so our dupes will slowly start accumulating rads out here, even with all the radiation meds and all the rad suits and all that stuff. So if we put down a layer of plastic, that should mean we will find, in fact, we can one right there as well. That should seal us in so that working down here won't be quite so scorchy. And then I think we can fill a little platform out under here and catch all of this. There's a whole bunch of resources there, and is that... Oh, that's neutronium, never mind. I thought there was actually more sandstone for some reason. We're going to need some of these resources anyway. We might as well catch it so we don't have to bring it all up in the bottom of the map. So what we're doing here is we're putting down a whole bunch of sandstone tiles right about there. Then when we chop this out, it all falls on top of this and we have some nearby sandstone to work with. Otherwise, it's going to get real sorts of awkward. Uh, the problem is we've got to bring up resources from the bottom of the map. And the bottom of the map is... Well, that's a long walk. A long, long, long walk. But I think we should be okay. This is just going to take a little bit of time and patience. First thing we got to do is we've got to stick in about 12 natural gas generators. I'm thinking two? Yeah, we'll do two natural gas generators and then just have them six stories high. As some of you might have noticed, I may have not went with the 2x6, instead went with the 3x4 design. It's just you need to stick in 12 natural gas generators to consume all of the 1 kilo of natural gas coming in. 
It takes about 11 and a fraction of the, the 12th. But 12 should mean we consume, consumed a lot of it. I'm thinking what we have over here is six tiles of space. I figure we can fit in either three batteries or two transformers in each one of those slots, which should allow us to feed power to most of the base and give ourselves some battery banks. Actually, we could fit in another battery bank over there as well, and we could fit in probably another battery up here somewhere. So we can squeeze in a few things here and there. But what I want to do here is we want to stick in a sort of a catchment area. This is where we're going to, well, catch the methane coming flying down in the interplanetary payloads, and this is where we're going to unpack it all. This is going to be maybe a little bit tricky to build, I've just realized. We've got to get everyone... Well, okay, we kind of knew it was going to be tricky one way or another, but we've got to get everyone in here to build it and leave space for them out. What we're going to have here is a heat injector. We're going to be able to dump heat out of this area into this... Well, absorb chill from this side to the other, whichever way you want to think of it. But this will be our cooling solution for the entire base. And this will be heat generation, and we're also going to need an aqua tuner. So we'll have another layer of thermium below this, and then an aqua tuner down here. One thing we're going to need for our build is a bit of super coolant. So since we already have a payload opener set up, let's just fire over a bit of super coolant for our, uh, our cooling solutions. Well, this might take a little while to fire over the necessary super coolant, but we'll get there eventually. In the meantime, we're going to have to build out some additional infrastructure to support all of this, though I just still need a way back in so that we can finish building this when the time comes. Uh, I suppose we can build up the edges a little bit, and so this is going to be a steam turbine section, and we're going to use this to boil all the polluted water from our natural gas generators. At the same time, we're going to dump all the extra chill it's just creating, or mm, the cold removing will dump into this tepidizer so it can be destroyed, and that way we should be able to boil all our water clean instead of using any sand or anything like that. This is going to be just a bristle blossoms only base. I have this idea that... Uh, why don't we make all the bases run on different food, just to make things just that little bit more interesting. For example, blue oil here is running almost exclusively on, where is it, stuffed berries. So because of the wild harvest that's going on, they get stuffed berries, which, oh, I know, bit of a cheat. So the rest of them I'm thinking though, we could maybe have this one run on bristle blossoms, but have another one run on bog buckets, have another one run on, say, something else, and just try and vary the diet across all the planets while still only living on one kilo of natural gas. Uh, maybe, maybe it'll work. This here is going to be what melts the one kilo of methane per second to turn it into gas so that we can get that into our natural gas generators. Though, yet yeah, getting it to melt on the rails is a little bit tricky. So what we want to have it do is come in here and just keep rotating around in this area until it actually melts. That's easier said than done. So what we've done here is we've created a loop. So... All of it should go through here, all the way around, then once it gets to this side, it'll pop back out and out round. So then all we need is some way of adding fresh methane onto the loop when everything is going wrong. So I'm thinking, or whenever we run out, or we need to more inject more. So I'm thinking we just bridge it on like that, and that should give us what we need. Well, in theory. Oh, and I should probably put in some ga the gas piping as well. I'm trying to remember to put in all the bits and bobs before we seal this up, I just know I'm going to have to break this open again at some point. Oh, God damn it! somehow, even though we're on a, like, there's, there's gas everywhere. I think a piece of oxalite was in this rocket and managed to off-gas a bit. So now we've just got little bits of oxalite. Oh, and someone peed their suit. Yep, just, mm, this is going to make things just so much more fun. But it's fine, it's fine. We'll figure out a way to get the gases out of there. To get the gas out of this room, we decided on a very old-school ploy. We're, we're just going to use a manual generator and some gas pumps. Should be fairly handy. There's almost nothing left in there already. Yeah, come on. Just get the last few MCGs out, and once that's finished, perfect. We'll just uh, deconstruct that. Problem solved. Now, to help get the gases out of the rest of the place, which I probably should have done earlier, I've sealed up this side here. And that should mean that only the small amount of gases left in here should just vent off into space, and no new gases from down here can get in. So, realistically, I should just be able to pop the top off this. Uh, say, give us a hole right there. And all the gases should start flooding out, and we can quickly drain this area of the remaining gases. Might have to do something similar for over here, though, as well. So, assuming our methane melter works just fine, it'll, and it gives us out some methane gas, we're going to pump it along through these igneous uh, gas pipes. We're not even going to try and extract the chill out of it, to be honest. We're just going to dump it in here and not really care. If we need any more chill, we can draw it out of this box directly. And that should be that. Oh, yeah, we're still going to need to vent the gases from this. In this build, we're not going to be taking advantage of the carbon dioxide. We don't need it. 
And, oh, great. Yep. One second. There we go. Easy peasy. All the carbon dioxide will get shunted up there into space. We're not even going to try and use it for anything. I suppose we could carbon skim it and make it more polluted water, but we don't even need the dirt. We're going with a very simplistic base for this first methane design. For the power spine here, we're going to use heavy watt wire and we're going to make it out of steel. Namely because we're monsters. Uh, yeah, it just... Back home we have 289 tons of steel and it's just one of our most plentiful materials and I stifled my crops again. Oh, I think it was something to do with the tungsten. Damn it, what's the temperature is that at? 28? No problems. All we have to do is just empty the storage here. The storage, the storage has got 10 kilos of water in it that's too warm. Once we empty that out and put in some fresh stuff, it'll be fine. There we go. They'll be back to normal in no time. What's our calories at? Yeah, 18 million. We should be fine. No one's going to be starving anytime soon. All right, back here. Where were we? Ah, yes, I think we've got most of this done. Have we got rid of most of the gases? Hey! All we had to do is cut it off from the rest of the annoying gases and it eventually vacuumed itself out. Uh, we can seal that up and we can finally put down the landing area over here. This is where we're going to put our payload opener. Right about there is where I was planning. Actually, wait, no, right there. Mm, give me a minute to get this all lined up in a row. So, this mess here, eh? Um... This is where we're going to have our targeting beacon. The targeting beacon is going to make sure that all of the interplanetary payloads land around here. This auto sweeper is going to pick it up and load it into the payload opener. The payload opener is then going to have... Uh, where is it? I should get the shipping rails from this. Uh, I think the shipping rails should go up to there. Yep. And we'll stick in a conveyor chute. Now, people always ask, why don't I just let the conveyor loader hold it? The conveyor... or the unloader or the payload opener can hold basically an infinite amount of resources as far as I'm aware. You can just keep stocking it up. But they might patch that out in the future, so I'd like to put an intermediary step where we drop it on the ground and then load it into the uh, the actual uh, conveyor loader section over here. So once it's opened, it gets dropped, the methane gets dropped on the ground. Plus, this does mean that if we send over something here that's not methane, we can at least gain access to it if we really need it. Now, this stuff here, like the auto sweeper, the conveyor loader, they're going to need cooling. So does this steam turbine. So to provide that cooling, what we're going to do is put a little transfer medium on each one of them. And for that, we've just got a bit of super coolant. So for example, we can just deconstruct those three pipes there, and we can deconstruct that there. That'll put 30 kilos of super coolant there and about 40 kilos there. That should be enough, based on those thermium tiles right there, to transfer the temperature in. If not, we can get some temperature shift plates or something like that, but mm, that should be, uh, should be about right. The rest of this stuff we can just... Actually, you know what? Deconstruct that one while you're there as well, and the rest can all get dumped back into the tank. I think I went to the steam turbine, which is probably a good thing. Then we'll sweep up the gunk, and I think that takes care of the landing section. Hmm. Now we just got to take care of over here. We've got to put in a living section down, down, this, uh, ah, down this area. It's just all of the polluted water. We've got to collect that. Then we've got to send it over there. Actually, that's the next step. Where is the polluted water going to come from and how are we going to get it over to its necessary location? Very, very simple catchment area. All of the polluted water is going to fall out of that little nozzle there, fall down here, roll all the way to the end and get collected by this liquid pump. We're going to actually control it. Instead of just pumping at the moment it hits, I want to do it a little bit at a time. And then it's all going to end up over here. Hmm. You know, we could enlarge this and actually extract the dirt, but I think we're just going to let the dirt collect in there. So long as it doesn't get too hot, and we're going to have a temperature, temperature sensor to make sure that doesn't happen. As long as it doesn't get too hot in there, all of the dirt can just stay in there out of the way. Yeah, yeah, it should be fine. Uh, you go there, and... Yeah, okay, so that's polluted water collected, carbon dioxide dealt with, power generated. All we need to do is come up with a living quarters area down here. And first up, bedrooms. Let's see here. Hey, would you look at that bedroom. Uh, this is one thing that catches people. You don't need just one comfy bed. It can be multiples of comfy bed. I know it says single bed in for a bedroom. It says single comfy bed, but they're actually talking about the single comfy bed, comfy bed. Uh, it used to be called a single comfy bed. Then they changed the name to just comfy bed. Um, so yeah, it's not just one bed. You can have multiple beds in a room and it still counts as a bedroom. Food production is going to be easy peasy. We're just going to stick down a lamp. They, well, they provide enough illumination to three tiles to the left, three tiles to the right to grow, to grow bristle blossoms and done. That provides food. Now I've put down, it takes six to support one duplicate on this difficulty level. We're going to need, well, to have an extra one just to, to make sure nothing untoward happens. So you, you do want to be able to stockpile just a little bit. So we're going to need to run 13 bristle blossoms, but that should be fine. With crops sorted, next up is the bathroom. Easy peasy, just 12 tiles, toilet and sink, you're done. Next up we're going to have liquid storage over here. This is where, oh, that's wrong. 
this is where we're going to have the reed fiber running off basically toilet water. So long as we keep our duplicates inside most of the time, we should get enough reed fiber out of it for the few outside excursions they're going to have to do. Their only real purpose is emptying the desalinator, and we'll put the desalinator inside the base. That way it just means they don't have to leave. It should make it much, much simpler. I mean, we still want them to be able to leave, but it won't be absolutely necessary for their jobs. All right, let me put in a few different types of bobs. Oh, we also need oxygen production as well. Now, one thing that's going to look a bit unusual here is where's our food production going to be? This is our whole base. So we've got our bedrooms, we've got our washroom, we've got our miscellaneous room here, which is for growing reed fiber and repairing our atmosphere suits. Then we've got our great hall down here, and then the rest out here is food and desalination. But it turns out, I think this was changed. Someone was saying in the old version or the base game version, this doesn't work, but it does in the new version. You can just stick a grill inside your great hall and it still remains a great hall and if it does that well we'll just stick in a refrigerator in here as well and not only that we can solve two problems that have plagued food cooking for so long simultaneously you see you can put an auto sweeper into a room and it doesn't destroy it it's not considered industrial material it's the conveyor loader that will destroy a room it's considered industrial machinery so what we can do is we can stick a little auto sweeper here and that auto sweeper can not only sweep food into the the cooking machine or the electric grill. It can also get any food that's dropped on the ground and just dump it right back in the refrigerator. All in one fell swoop. And this should still be a great haul. Well, okay, we'll have to wait till the, uh, the auto sweeper is completed to confirm that. But yes, I do believe that we can just cram all of this in here and have a nice, very compact great haul for ourselves. Yep, great haul. Easy peasy. We've even got a little bit of space left over. I wonder, actually, could we stick in a gas grill in there? I mean, okay, it wouldn't be quite a chunky machine, but... Yep, you could stick in a gas grill as well. You could do all of your cooking needs in one section. That's, um, that's nice. Yeah, that would be for another base, though. In this one, we want to do the oxygen production, and we're going to actually have to get the water down here as well. I was thinking similar plan to the last time. We put in a sort of a water cooling loop that goes all the way around the base, and the water cooling loop provides the, uh, the cooling, the water, and the food, everything. Sort of like we did on our startup one over on the oil planet. Just let me see where I'm going to stick all this piping. Now that looks more like it. What we're going to do for cooling here is, again, we're going to rely on the methane over here. It's going to dump in, the, the freshly chilled methane will dump its chill in here when we need it. And the water will circulate through here. Oh, and once I empty out that liquid pipe, we'll, uh, we'll have the clean water that's coming from here. It'll be about 95C. That stuff's going to come in here and slowly bleed onto this pipe and get fed around. It should work. It's very similar to the last design, and uh, I'm hoping it won't fail catastrophically, but if I, highly unlikely. We'll probably be fine. Well, that's most of the basics in place. We've got all the rooms, we've got oxygen supply, we've got crops. Now I'm just going to stick in an atmosphere checkpoint, and this time I'm going to disable it immediately to stop everyone dropping their suits on the ground. All right, come on. What are you going to rent us? In fact, I am going to prioritize this so I don't forget about it. There we go. Disabled. No one lost their suits. All good. Now we just got to make sure that the oxygen coming from down here ends up in there. Ooh, yeah. It, the crazy thing about this is every time you build one of these little bases, you're building an entire base. You got to take care of all their food, their gas, their their carbon dioxide, the whole nine yards, and it's just, it's a lot. It's kind of insane how much it goes into each little base you make. Now that can go in there, and we'll have the overflow actually. Yeah, we'll have the overflow go up to the top of the map. I want to actually pressurize the top part here a little bit heavier. Uh, the reason being, we're going to have polluted water at the bottom of this area, and I want to make sure that this room is heavily pressurized, or pressurized like to about three kilos, so that the uh, the polluted water down here doesn't off gas. I don't want to be dealing with a whole bunch of polluted oxygen that we then have to sieve or something like that. That will require sand, and we want this place to be completely self-sustained. And we're not doing poke shells. Not on this one. One other thing we need to do is we need to double to triple layer this wall. The reason being, well, the water in here, if we're doing it right, should start rising. And when it does, it's going to start smothering this base. So we want to make sure the base is insulated and can't get flooded. Uh, for that, we're going to need at least three tiles thick of tiles. And I want to put in a layer of insulated ones as well, just to prevent any heat getting into our build. In fact, yeah, this is, yeah, this shouldn't take a minute. I will admit, I took great pleasure in just messing it up a little bit here so that the insulation is on the outside here, but it's on the inside here for no apparent reason. I don't know, I made a mistake somewhere about here, and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to just live with it. I just left it there. All right, but over here, this is going to be how the duplicates get in and out of the base and service most of this area. So, yeah, this is going to be tricky because we have to assume that at some point, if we're sending all the water from all the planets here, this will eventually 
keep getting taller and taller and taller and eventually it's going to overflow and that means it's it's the liquid is going to get past this liquid lock here so we need to make sure that this is completely pressure proof and all sorts of things so i'm thinking first up we put a napta liquid lock there that will give us a, a gap between these two then that will stop the gases in here escaping because we don't want them escaping into the back background of space while there's no water there and then at the same time, we're going to have to put in a liquid lock here. And I'm thinking we'll throw in... Should give us some super coolant. We'll throw in super coolant in the bottom layer, some nuclear waste on the top layer, and that should give us a liquid lock that the water can't push its way through. If we tried to just use water, uh, water pressure would cause massive problems. Uh, let's see, liquid. 200 kilos should actually be plenty. Yeah, we'll make you a sweep only. Yeah, once we have 2 kilos of that in there, 200 kilos of that in there, then we can start dumping in nuclear waste. I know where we can get lots of that stuff around here. There we go, lots of beautiful nuclear waste. Though, ooh, is that a bad idea? What temperature does this stuff solidify at? 26.9, there's no... Is there any way the water would get cold enough here, or the liquid? No. No? Probably? Unlikely. Incredibly unlikely. But, just to be on the safe side, we're going to put in another blob of naphtha as well. But... Yeah, I think that should be about enough. We'll get rid of you, and we can deconstruct you. Uh, this is where we've been getting all our nuclear waste from. We just mopped off the stuff that fell, ar fell around over there. Uh, actually, there. We'll, we'll let people go out of there, but we're not letting anyone in there in general, namely because, well, there's sort of this guillotine process going on at the moment where anything that comes in here gets problems. So I have to keep turning that on and off as duplicates go in and out, and even then, there's still the odd injury. Not my fault, I swear. So the theory behind this liquid lock is, normally if you have just, say, water in here, when the water pressure gets too high on one side, it compresses down the water in here, which causes the other side to overflow, and you end up not having underwater liquid locks work so well. But when you use different liquids, water can't compress those. Well, or even if it does a little bit, it doesn't really make a difference considering they're different types of liquids. So putting in one liquid different should prevent it from happening. Using two... Sure, it'll probably work perfectly fine. And we've even got a blob of naphtha right there. We can see on the liquids over there. So that should really make it hard for the water to burst in there because I'd hate to lose this place later on and having to come back and fix it. Now, I think the first thing line of business, though, is to fill this liquid loop. This is the liquid loop that provides, well, everything to this base. So I'm thinking we just siphon some stuff off here. In fact, since we have the snip tool installed, this makes things far simpler. Hmm... You see, we're going to be feeding on over here, so let's start filling up this loop. I'm thinking you can go about there, and water can go in there, and that will start the cooling loop. This will go around here, right past this area, and we'll cover more on that in a bit. First, fill the loop. Now, this water is going to be a little bit warm. It's coming in at 47 or so. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, and uh, people were worried about this not keeping up. Don't worry, this thing can definitely keep up with the water demands. In fact, most of the time it's just waiting for more water to show up, uh, even with the cleaning cycle. And that's also why we have two of them. Now, over here, let's see. Yeah, it's starting to... F Ooh. One thing I'm annoyed about here, though, is uh, this is going to heat the place up. But I suppose it's already 44 degrees already. Can't make it much worse. And gas-wise, I wanted to actually get all the gases out of here, so I took the roof off the top. But I don't think the gases are leaving fast enough. Though most of it's oxygen now. A little bit of polluted oxygen won't be the end of the world, though. I'd prefer to get rid of that if we could. Ooh, this could take a little while while we fill everything up. Jesus, that is a lot of water. I suppose it's also going to fill up all those um, food, food tiles as well, the hydroponics tiles. While this is filling up and getting us a nice little backlog of water, I think the plan should be to go down here and tap into the salt water geyser. We're going to need to pump all the... Oh, well, there is actually a bunch of salt water around that. Oh. I'm going to have to figure out some way of getting that out. Right, we'll start with the general just water geyser. That one there should be easy enough to do. All we need to do is stick in a liquid pump right beside the water geyser. Uh, get rid of that ladder. Replace that with an automation signal from a hydro sensor. Once the water comes out of this, it's all clean water to start. It may be 95C, but it is clean. Then we just take that water and we pump it up to the top of the map. And then we just dump it into the pool. That way, when the water gets up to this level, it'll overflow the liquid tank. But until that point we're fine. So, yeah, this should get us more water to dump into the system, because right now this has just been overpressurized for ages. Do we have anyone who can analyze this? You know what, I'm sure we got someone. They can go have a, a whack at it. Zap there is going to finish their examination of the water geyser, and I think over here we're just going to have to bite the bullet and find some way in. I'm thinking... Oh. Yeah, we can do something similar to what we've done over the other side. 
the saltwater geyser is one of the main reasons the base is here. Well, that and it was a silly idea to do it, but we wanted to have people on every planet. Now, that water from the saltwater geyser is going to come up here, hop into this desalinator, get desalinated, and then get pumped all the way up here and dump right back into the water tank. That just cuts down on labor for our two points. And I'm thinking, what's the output on this thing? 17.5 kilos a second? Ooh. We might want to put in a storage tank just to buffer it up between eruptions. Mm. Let me see. I think we can put in a few right here. Couple of quick liquid tanks right there. That'll store up the, the salt water between eruptions. This thing only processes about five kilos per second. And once this is analyzed, I'm not expecting it to be that impressive. What have we got? Uh, calculate average output. 3.49 kilos per second? What the? All right. This one over here is 3.17, which is actually a clean water geyser. Salt water geyser is 3.49. Between the two of these, this should actually provide the five kilos of water necessary just to run the oil planet. Any excess water beyond that will just be... Oh. Oh well. That's good, I suppose, but I was thinking we were going to have to send more water here from other planets. We're still going to send water here from other planets. I mean, otherwise we won't be able to fill the water tank all to the brim. Well, actually, no, we will, but we won't be able to fill it as fast as I would like. All right, with that done, that done, and that done, and we've got the liquid flowing through here, we're going to dump a little bit of liquid into this system here. This is where we're going to be boiling all the polluted water we deal with, so let me see. You can connect like that. We dump some water in here. There's not a lot, but we don't really need that much for this system. And it'll become more apparent as we switch it on, but down here we are currently pumping up all the salt water section. Well, there's a lot of clean water in there, and pretty well compressed as well. I'd also like to get the water out of that airflow tile. That is annoying me. But it didn't matter. I tried replacing that with a regular brick. It made no difference. Actually, what if we place a brick on top of it and then delete the one on... Yeah, I, I can get this. Or it can just magically drop down for some reason. I presume the pressure dropped in there low enough for it to go away. Okay, works for me. Okay, with that done, I think we can just about ready to turn this on. I'm doing one last big sweep. Uh, gas pressure in there is still... Yeah, still a little bit high. Well, it's not a vacuum yet, but I don't think it really matters. There's going to be a little bit of polluted oxygen, but our people can breathe it and get rid of it. It won't be good for their lungs, but it won't be the end of the world. All right, uh, in that case, we need to have methane getting rained down on here, and we're going to need some power for that. What I think we're going to do is hook up this end of the power grid, which is just for landing the methane and distributing it down here. So hook that up so it starts actually rotating the methane through. Then we'll have to hook up this section. Mm. Let me think for a minute. We are ready to start this up. All we have to do is get enough power going to this targeting beacon to get the methane sent over here. So we'll have to turn off that beacon, which we've already got an automation switch on that, so that's fine. But we have to turn on this one and we have to power the whole thing up. And we need to have open sky above it, otherwise it's going to land in weird places. So we need to take... wait, there. We need to take that. Everything there needs to go. So those three solar panels and all of those plastic tiles that are in the way, they all need to be gone. Perfect. Now you can see the sky. All right, we will enable you. Then we'll hook up the power. This will, of course, confuse things, so we're going to disable you. Nice. Okay, enabled by automation grid. Everything's green on that front. And that means any of the shells that land over here, or the pay payloads that land over here, will get dumped into the payload opener. The methane will get dropped right there on that insulated tile. Let's get rid of that plastic while we're here. In fact, let's give this place a quick sweep just to make sure. Then we can dump that into the conveyor loader and get it to go around here. It's limited to one kilo per second. It should rotate through here, melt and turn into gas. Now I just got to go to the oil planet and make sure all of that actually works. Oh, which reminds me, we can go and rename the oil planet. Instead of Bloom Oil, it can be... Hmm, this is Aku, Texas. It's where we get all our oil from. All right, uh, over here is where we're going to be launching our one kilo per second. It's already set. Uh, do we actually have to, please excuse me, completely blanked that we had severed this rail. There we go. So now that's being shunted in at one kilo per second. One thing that was pointed out in the comments, because I completely blanked it, was as that methane passes through there, it's going to cool down the, the metal tile, the lead. And if it got too cool, it would cause our blob of super coolant over here under our auto sweeper to freeze, and then our auto sweeper would eventually overheat. So I basically just dumped in a bunch of insulated tiles here. So yes, this lead will get super cold after a while with all the, the methane passing through it. But it shouldn't transfer over to that section, meaning that should always remain a liquid. And done. Now we just have to wait until this loads up. 
God, this is going to take a while, isn't it? Come on. And this will be the first launch of methane. Excellent. Now that just means in another 200 seconds there'll be another launch, and 200 seconds after that, and 200 seconds after that. Forever and ever and ever. Well, as long as we keep providing it with uranium, which we'll get back around to that. Ah, it's not nearly looking complicated enough yet, but soon. Soon this area will be covered in lots of interplanetary shells. Alright, back to Dampona though. Uh, actually, why are we calling it Dampona? It needs to be called something else. Mm, you know what, I'll think about that. Alright, uh, with that on the way, we need, I need to figure out how I'm going to power up these gas pumps. They need to somehow be connected up to the power grid without overloading everything. Uh, we might be able to hook them up sneakily just for a minute. Oh, I don't want the tepidizer coming on though, that would be bad. Yeah, we can hook them up that way. I know I'm mixing and matching wires here, but honestly, there's very little power draw going to be going on here. Just at the start, until we turn on that aqua tuner, but by then we should have natural gas flowing and we can sever ourselves from the section over here. Now we get to see if this whole thing works. The shell should be arriving shortly, or should I say the interplanetary payload should be arriving shortly. Come on down, buddy. Please land at the right one. Did I turn off the other one? Yeah, I definitely did. There we go. Perfect. And I hope it doesn't exchange heat with anything. Uh, what's the temperature view? 19 degrees, methane minus 192. Alright, let's make sure you fall out in the correct location. Yeah, 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 we know, we know. Unwinding it, dumping it. Perfect. And it gets dropped down, keeps its temperature. Exactly what we wanted. Alright, you. Filtration, no. Consumable ore. Methane. You, you're set to one unit. Perfection. Okay, go for it. Alright, that car travels across here, and let's hope I didn't mess this up. That gets limited to one kilo. Passes through here, this is going to have problem. Oh! Already turning to natural gas. Excellent! Oh yeah, this thing is actually really, really warm by comparison. Normally I let this run down to about minus 80 so I can get some real chill out of it. I don't want to be wasting the aqua tuner. Or not the aqua tuner, the ah, tepidizer if needs be. This should quickly get us up to 20 kilos of pressure per tile. Once it does, we want to be able to pump that over there. Mm. Power-wise, how do we do that without causing a horrible mess? This will turn on everything, including the tepidizer, but so long as the tepidizer remains off, it shouldn't cause an overload. So, yeah, let's just do that. Wait a minute. No overload signals? Yeah, we can sever that when the time comes. Perfect. All right, then we just got to wait until we get enough get natural gas pressure in here for this to start pumping. And just as we start to run out of methane, another shell has landed. Perfect. Okay, little bit of natural gas getting dumped onto the grid. You know what? And uh, let's pick this if it's below 30 grams. Let's let a little bit of gas build up first. We want to make sure we've got more than enough ready. Uh, that's going to drop down some polluted water, which is going to off gas, which... Oh, well, yep, that was done on my part. Damn it, I should have thought about that. Never mind, never mind. We'll we'll start up the oxygen production in a minute once we've got a decent amount of gas pressure in here. You can see it's it's just fluctuating so wildly. Uh, what's going on? Why is no one unpacking? Oh my god, the duplicates are going to do it. God damn it, guys. Uh, okay, okay. Then in that case, we'll just put in a quick door. Yep. We'll throw in a door right here. We'll make sure it's a three-tile hot... Uh, we'll make sure it's a four-tile high door, just so that they stop interfering with things. I know you I know you mean well, but seriously, you're messing up our plans here. Oh, I should also mention I dropped over a bunch of steel, blossom seeds, uh, a few things that were going to be necessary for growing everything. Uh, for example, we need a thimble reed seed over here. We need some blossom seeds in this. Yeah, just a few of the bits and bobs. Actually, we can cancel that for the moment. There's no point planting those just yet until we've got everything else in place. What pressure are you at? 29, 25? Once you hit about 30 kilos, you'll be stable, and then we'll just start connecting you up. I think that's good enough. All right. If the pressure's above 20 kilos, start pumping. Done. Then all we need to do is make sure... Yeah, that's all hooked up there. We don't want to hook up those because that's going to cause a... Well, an awful lot of power. We just want to hook up the one that powers the oxygen, which is right here. Uh, that's going to cause the temperature to rise on those, but... There we go. 
You two down here can start working. That's going to start dumping oxygen into the system. That's going to start oxygenating the base. Perfect. That acts as a transfer medium for temperature. Otherwise, these would overheat in here. And I think that's got to start. I haven't looked up the batteries yet because they're probably going to start overheating as well. Well, let's just give this a minute and... Oh, you better not be doing something silly. Nope. I was worried they might get some sort of air bubble in here or trap something or other, but no, it's just polluted oxygen and polluted oxygen. Fine by me. And as at this pressurize for a bit before we do anything too crazy. But it's working. It's working. We're, we're literally firing power from another planet to run this place and provide the oxygen and the water and everything. Well, we will be in a bit once it runs for a while. Let me do some double and triple checking on everything here, but I think... I think we got this working. You know, everything was going so good, and uh, I just did not pay attention. There's no liquid output. Well, I didn't put a ceramic pipe here. So now I have to get back in here somehow and fix that without letting in a bunch of gases or anything, or letting out the water that's in there. A um, little nap to liquid lock there. We can de deconstruct that tile, deconstruct that tile, get back in. No gases should enter, and we can put in that ceramic tile. Oh, that reminds me, though. Uh, we should turn you off, and... Are you on or off? You're on. We'll turn you off as well. We don't want that thing activating while we're in there. That might be a little inconvenient. All right, that just leaves... Okay, that leaves most of the basics down. Things spinning up. Water pressure over here. I set this to 2,000 just for now. We're going to wait until it's 100 kilos normally, but right now we do not want this turning on. And if we leave that on, it'll dump in a bunch of polluted water. We'll uh, cover more on that in a minute. All right, someone, someone want to build that tile? Come on. Thank you, gurgly. <laughs> okay, out of there, out of there. Perfect. Everyone finish that. And that will be the last step. Right, with this done, what we do is we turn this down if it's above one kilo. If there's any liquid in here, this needs to be turning on and boiling it. And this, if the temperature is below 130, this needs to be turning on and making sure there's enough steam in here. We just want to make sure that any water that comes in here gets immediately boiled. Now that's going to take... A, actually, that won't take much time at all. Joys of super coolant. That will, of course, end up cooling down this area here pretty rapidly. That's okay. It's okay. It's anticipated. We've got that uh, tepidizer there to counteract any chill if needs be. And all of the arriving methane is... Okay, it's immediately turning into gas. So this place is starting to get steamy. Steamy enough that the steam turbine has turned on. Now, if the pressure in here is more than 20 kilos per tile, what'll happen is it'll turn off the shutoff. This is the where the output water from the steam turbine goes. And instead of getting recycled back into the room, that water will just get sent over here and dumped into this tank. And that tank is hooked up to our main system here, as in it's hooked in through here. So basically it feeds water, oxygen, every, water, oxygen, toilets, everything like that. And god damn it, I forgot to do the toilets again. Every time. Okay, fine, we'll put you there. And you could go like that. Okay, so it feeds the oxygen and the toilets and... Mm, I also forgot the carbon dioxide skimmer. I, I don't like to branch off uh, like directly. I like to make sure there's a bridge going on and off. All right, with all of that done, so as you can see, the water, the steam in here is getting shunted out and the pressure is going to keep dropping. Once the pressure drops low enough, which is going to be in another, oh, 10 kilos of pressure on average, then this will stop venting the water out and the water instead will start getting recycled. All right, water, steam pressure is dropping. I probably should have put it right beside that liquid vent. It's probably messing with it a little bit. But now the water is getting recycled back in to destroy the heat. So let's turn this sucker on. Now this is where all of the natural gas gets turned into polluted water. And then if we say if it's above 100 kilos, I want you to start pumping. We kind of let it get a little bit out of control, but this is the boot up. Now that polluted water is going to get sent all the way across here and dumped into the tank. Well, the steam room. All right, here we go. It comes in there. And if it comes across this, it sets off the ah, the hydro sensor. And the hydro sensor goes, hey, there's some liquid in here. Steam turbine or aqua tuner turned on, generate some heat. We need to boil that water away. Otherwise, we can't recycle it. And OK, 96, 95. Come on, come on, come on. Now, what's the temperature like in here? Temperature's still plummeting, but not fast enough. I suppose there is a giant pool of supercoolant down there. It's going to take a while to drive the temperature down. And it's going to take a while to boil all that polluted water. Dear Lord, maybe we should set the temperature higher in here. We are just about there. Oh, there you go. Water gets boiled. Steam turbine activates again. And since there's more steam pressure in there now, or there should be, that excess water gets siphoned out. So as we put more water in here, it gets boiled, sent over here and recycled back into the system to become oxygen and basically a coolant shredder base as well. Power the toilets, sinks, all that stuff. 
So that's how we're recycling all of the polluted water. No sand required, just a straight up cleaning system. Now as for cooling down the base, uh, well, we sort of cool it from here. See this over here is sensing what the temperature is like in this area, and if it's above 22 degrees, it keeps this door engaged, and this door sucks temperature from the other side. And the other side is where all of our seriously cold methane is going, and oh my god, yep. No one's allowed in there. Perfect. Interplanetary launcher fills that up. And there we go, another 200 kilos of methane. Ooh, what's the air pressure like in here? Okay, gas pressure is rising. We're up to almost two kilos of pressure at the bottom, but nowhere enough near the top. But eh, no worries about overheating. In that case, we can start hooking up all the stuff in here. You can get hooked up, and you can get hooked up, you can get hooked up, and you can get hooked up. Oh, in that case, we should also sever that there. Now that's being powered entirely by, well, the natural gas. And, oh, we can sever that there. And this section over here can get hooked up. So now the whole thing's self-powered. There's no need for any of the solar panels. Uh, actually, the solar panels are required for over here, but that's okay. That's okay. We're going to start powering this entire section over here off of this wire. Getting our cooling loop to work is proving, well, a little bothersome. It's just uh, air cooling is no good for this much water. So instead, what we ended up doing is putting it through a couple of th thermium tiles. That seems to be working quite nicely. Plus, we do have an awful lot of chill to draw on over here. All we have to do is wait until the temperature in here stabilizes a bit, which already it is. It's, what is it? Yeah, it's down to 31 here, but you can see that some of the stuff is coming through at 27, 28, and it's only going to get colder. We just got to drag a little bit more chill back up through here. Though, oh, actually, we're not dragging thr chill through there. We're only dumping chill down into the living quarters. I suppose I can live with that? Hmm. You know what? I'll maybe think that over. I don't want this place getting too hot. That would be inconvenient. Oh, and over here, I think we're going to have to break back in and put in another temperature shift plate. That blob of polluted water is just annoying me. It's so small, it barely absorbs any heat, so it just sits there until more polluted water comes along, and it's pretty much constant. It's kind of annoying me, so instead, we are going to break in there and fix it. Hopefully, without causing any horrible problems in the process. Adding the temperature shift plate to just that corner should inject enough temperature in there to stop that from forming all the time. And in fact, we'll seal that up again. We could grab the dirt, but why bother? That... nope, stop. You should be pretty much evaporating instantly. Come on, seriously? Yeah, there we go. Okay, I have redirected some of the oxygen flow. We're going to start filling up the atmosuit docks as well and get this place prepped for actual habitation. What's the temperature? Look at that. Beautiful. Okay, not quite as habitable as I'd like over here, but we can... we can rectify that. What's it looking like? Hmm... Yeah, I think some more thermium piping over there is going to be required just to keep the temperature to a reasonable level. This base is just about ready to become habitable. I'm going to start planting the hydroponic farm tiles with bristle blossoms. Uh, they should be... Oh. Yeah, uh, don't know why that lagged out there for a second. And... done? Perfect. Now they're going to soak up a little bit of water, so we're going to have less water coming out the other side. We're into 9.9, 9.8. It'll take a bit of time before this catches up, but yeah, effectively we're losing a bunch of water as it passes through here because it's absorbed by the plants, and it will be absorbed steadily. 9.6... Mm, yeah, 9.6 seems to be about where it craps out at. So we're losing 0.4 of a kilo of water, which means we got to put on 0.4 of a kilo of water, and that water is going to be, well, 90 to 95 C, which is going to get dumped in here and make this place a little bit warm, but still... The, the heat in here, the temperature in this icebox is going down and down and down. Namely because of all the methane we're adding in all the time. I think it's going to get pretty chilly. While we're waiting for the rest of the chill to catch up so that we can migrate people over, we're going to start up the desalinator. And this thing does generate a fair bit of heat, and it only requires some user interaction once the salt fills up. And I don't think there's a lot of salt going to be passing through that anytime soon. Nope. Not just yet. We have about three tons of salt water and one and a half tons... Or, uh, yeah, not really. A lot of this is basically water to start. And then that will start cleaning out this section. While we are waiting for all of this stuff to catch up and for the base to stabilize and temperatures to equalize and all that stuff, oh, we're also sending over some resources for our next project here. We're going to rip this out. We don't want this here taking up space, otherwise the water can't move through this section, so we're going to put down some sandstone tiles, destroy all of that, and then sweep the remains up there. I want to sweep this whole map as well before we go, but I'll do all of that stuff off screen. For now, what we're going to do is build this out, rip this apart, and start reducing all the pathing options for all the duplicates to cut down on, well, lag. 
Uh, at the moment, the game is definitely chugging a little bit here and there, but I'm thinking if we start reducing options, sweeping, all sorts of things, we should be able to get a few frames back. Now, while we're waiting for all that to go on, here's a nice little project I'd like to take on right here. Much better. Now a coup can make sure his minions obey. Nice. Now the, the plan would be to have a monument on every single colony world, because that's how we roll. And as well as that, I still haven't got around to sending people over, have I? There's just, there's so many little things you need to do. Like, we need to strip out all of this, rip out all the, or sweep up all the bottom stuff. I want to get that all into one spot to cut down on pathing. Oh, we're going to have to rip out all these batch boxes. I'm going to do all of this off screen. I think the colony is up and ready to go. It's just a case of sending in the people at this point. And yeah, our water is actually increasing. True, we're not actually spending any of that water on oxygen right now because there's no one here to pick it up. But yeah, I think, I think I'm going to call this one a success. I'll do the rest of the updates off screen. And then uh, I think the next episode is going to be all about tackling the next planet. I'm not sure which one we want to go to yet. Oh, and we have to re rename this planet. Uh, yes, it's the water tank. This is where we're going to send all our water for storage. We have plenty of storage space left over. We've only got, what, half a tank of water? So we've still got another half a tank to go. Though, I suppose the base will take up a bunch of space. I'm thinking for our next colony, we go to Calderan. Calderan over here has, well, four iron volcanoes. And it's actually been heating the whole place up quite nicely. Uh, this place is, like, we get little bits of steam popping out of here when this one boils. The rest of it hasn't melted yet, but I'm thinking we just turn this into a giant steam room. I mean, we just sort of cap off the top, let the entire bottom half just melt, and have all the, the iron that's in there. There is so many tons of iron. How did that get there? Oh, yeah, the dirt turned to sand. Uh, for example, this iron here, there's three tons, there's 13 tons, there's, oh, two tons, 48 tons, 20 tons... Uh, over here we've got 42 and 23. We've got hundreds of tons of iron here, but it's all quite hot. I say we melt this place out and build a base on top of it and then just have the entire bottom half of this being some sort of steam turbine setup. Now, I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do that yet, but hey, that's the fun of Oxygen Not Included, is figuring out how you're going to do the silly things you come up with. Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Good luck.